Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a nice Halloween day and evening, night <laughs> and also a lovely month of October. For me, October went by very fast. I actually didn't have the time to read as much as I wanted to, but I did finish some interesting books and I wanted to share it with you and just, yeah, talk about everything that I've read or started reading in October, but didn't finish just yet. And also just recommend some interesting books and maybe even a couple of movies or TV shows or documentaries. We were going to discuss everything that I have read or watched in October. And I really love October. It's one of my favorite months. It used to be December because uh, my birthday is in December and we of course have Christmas and New Year's and a lot of like fun family holidays. Uh, and I still like December. I still love it. Uh, however, when I got older, I realized that October was like my most favorite month because of like the change of the weather and just like the vibe of sitting on the couch with a blanket and a hot coffee or tea and just reading and watching horror movies. I love to watch horror movies the whole year, but during October it just feels, I don't know, <laughs> more spooky or better. I didn't watch a lot of good horror movies during this month. I still have a lot that I want to watch. I watched The Nun too which was horrible it was like for me it was like a very bad movie some people say that it was better than the nun one the first one <laughs> but i think this one was even worse if that's possible but it's just my opinion of course i also have watched mary shelley uh i know that movies like are out for like a couple of years now uh it's not new anymore yeah i never got around to watch it and now i have and I really got into the mood to watch that movie because I read uh, Monster She Wrote that discussed the, like the life of Mary Shelley. And then I thought of that movie again and I watched it during the month of October, like in the beginning of October. And that one I did enjoy. Uh, it could have been better, of course, but I think I'd give it like four stars and I, I really liked it. And I think that the actress that they chose to play Mary Shelley was really uh, like into the role and into the character of her life. And I also watched Talk to Me, which is also a horror movie. And that one I did like. It had like a original take on the whole like haunting and uh, demon and ghost kind of stories. I thought that one was quite original compared to like The Nun or another movie about hauntings and demons and i think that's it so i think i will watch more horror movies in november um but for now that was all and then we will move on to the books which um i have more to tell about <laughs> so i purchased in october this book which is a poem for every autumn day um by like edited by ellie Asiri, but the poems in here are from different writers. I will name a couple of them so you have like an idea what you can find in this book. So there are a lot of writers in here like from the classics uh, that I always wanted to read. Uh, like William Wordsworth and um, Oscar Wilde, James Carter, Walt Whitman. Uh, I do own the whole Leaves of Grass co uh, poem collection from Walt Whitman. I read like one or two poems, so I haven't finished it. Also, Mary Oliver, William Blake, of course. So a lot of big names in here, but also names that I have never seen before. But the reason why I bought this book was, first of all, of course, it has a beautiful cover. And it has like the perfect vibe for like autumn day, October, fall, everything. But I saw this book on TikTok and I actually never buy books from um, BookTok or like recommend recommendations on TikTok because I... Do not watch a lot of TikTok content on books and most of the books that I see there are not entirely what I enjoy reading but I saw this one and it was not from book talk it was from like this account that did a lot with poetry and uh, they have this actress that I really like they asked her to read the poems and the actress that I'm talking about is Helen mm -hmm. um, I always pronounce her name correctly so I will just edit here but I really like her. She's from Harry Potter, but also she did a lot of other like big movies and uh, TV shows. But she has like this beautiful voice and she was reading this poem that I have never heard before, but she was reading it so well and I just enjoyed the, listening to the words that I had to look up this poem and I saw that she was reading from this book. So uh, first I looked up the poem, which was The Guest House by Rumi. Uh, he's a very famous poet as well and I just loved this poem. And I had to 
buy this book of course so i started reading it and i found a lot of other poems that i like and i'm not really into poetry i have actually i think before this year almost never read a poem <laughs> so i really want to get more into it and i think this book is perfect for it uh, but another poem that i liked was auguries of innocence by william blake uh, it's a very like very short poem but it's uh, quite beautiful and uh, another one by Lord Byron about his dog that died and I didn't know if I would like Lord Byron's uh, poetry because I actually didn't like him as a character in Mary Shelley's documentary he was kind of an uh, asshole but <laughs> I think this poem is amazing um, and the fact that he wrote such a beautiful poem about his dog does say something about his character i think um a person that likes animals should be in some way a good person i think if i hope uh so yeah i i really like the poems in here not of course not every poem but i liked to discover a poem every day and you can start in september until november so for the rest of the month of november i will still read some poems in here and then I will just put it away and next year in September I will pick up this book again and discover the poems in September. So check this book out if you also like want a beginner book for getting into poetry and enjoying like one poem or two poems a day. Um, this one will be I think a good choice. Then the first book that I actually finished in October it was in the beginning of October and it was Alice in Wonderland. And I started reading it at the end of September and finished it like like the first week of October, I think. So I I love Alice in Wonderland. It's my favorite fairy tale. Uh, as a child, I watched like the Disney adaptation a hundred times, I think at least. <laughs> I can't explain why I love it so much, but it's it's just something about Alice traveling off to this different dimension that is crazy and doesn't add up in rules or in laws, and, and everyone is like acting weird. But it's also very beautiful like there are flowers there and just a little bit of magic um so yeah i just i, I like that idea compared to all the fairy tales it was something different i always wanted to read it so i read some fragments here and there but i never read it like from cover to cover the entire story in english so this was the first time and i read uh, this edition which is the 150 year anniversary edition uh, and it contains like uh, the original uh, drawings by, let me say his name correctly. He was like, I think a friend of Lewis Carroll and he did the original drawings for Alice in Wonderland. The original text of Strangers are by Sir John Daniel and they were done in 1865. So to show you an illustration uh, example, like this one, they're quite beautiful and they fit the story precisely. And like some of them start in the text, which gives like this one, oh, this one is one of my favorites, I think. So it really fits the atmosphere of the story. I really enjoyed reading it. I think most people are of course familiar with the story of Alice, uh, which is a little girl that gets tired of listening to her sister and sees a rabbit walking by and talking about how he's late for a meeting and she just runs after him and goes into the rabbit hole and discovers Wonderland. And uh, of course, all kinds of adventures starting, starting to happen to her. It's a very interesting, but also a very famous and classic piece of literature for children. Um, and uh, while I was reading it, I wanted to know more about Lewis Carroll. So I was just Googling a little bit and watching some um, videos on him up on YouTube. And then I saw this documentary about him, which is called The Controversial Genius Behind Alice in Wonderland. And it's just on YouTube, free to watch. Actually, I didn't know anything about Lewis Carroll. So I didn't know the controversy behind him. This documentary was quite surprising to me. So when I started watching it, it was like a very interesting view of his life. And of course, they talked about Alice and her sisters, who were the inspiration behind Alice in Wonderland. And they were like actual people. Um, they were children of the professor at the university, of like the dean of the university uh, that Alice Carroll was working for. Uh, and he was a mad teacher, like a mad professor. And that was like the one of the things about him. He was very strict and about rules and laws and doing everything correctly and perfectly. And he created Wonderland, which doesn't apply like to 
the laws of physics or just rules or even grammatical laws are broken in Alice in Wonderland. So that's quite interesting. Controversy side of the documentary talks about his quite weird uh, affection to children. Um, and there are, there are like these things that they discover, proofs and photographs or um, parts of his, di his diary that would tell a story um, of his life and how he had a connection with this uh, Alice and her sister and with all the children. I didn't know anything about it and when I watched it I was like quite shocked about these accusations. But at the end of the documentary we actually still don't know much about what happened between him and Alice. And throughout the entire life of Alice she never said anything about um, him doing something wrong. But there were some weird things about his choices and his friendship with the little girls of course. So for now after seeing this documentary I can only say that uh, yeah he was quite a strange person but there are of course like speculations about uh, a possible relationship between him and the older sister. Speculations about him and Alice I think have even less proof but there are so controversies about him and like the older one. Uh, the older sister which I forgot the name of but yeah it's it's weird uh, because I, I really like this fairy tale and I usually do not connect too much the writer or like the artist behind the art. Um, I try to keep those two separate because even though someone who creates a beautiful piece of work like a book or a painting doesn't mean that it was a good person. A uh, good example would be Yukio Mishima which was definitely not a good person but he did write some beautiful books. When I like his book doesn't mean that I like his views or him. But I didn't realize that this was also the case with someone uh, who I used to like from like my childhood. So I really hope that he wasn't like that and that he just wrote a beautiful book about the children of someone that he was friends with, um, the children of the Dean, and that he just was a strange man, that's all. I, I hope that that's the case. So that was Alice in Wonderland. I didn't expect to go through this whole rabbit hole of the Lewis, Lewis Carroll controversy, um, but I did. And um, yeah, that was, of course it was interesting, but also a little bit shocking. Then another classic that I read was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This is actually the first novel by Jane Austen that I have finished. I started reading Pride and Prejudice years ago, but I never finished it. Um, so this is the first one that I finished and I really enjoyed it. The main character is Catherine who is a young girl and she has this opportunity to go to Bath which is a bigger city compared to the city that she was currently living in and she goes there with the friends of her family and they kind of introduce her into the society. So in the beginning they don't know anyone there and then she meets this uh, older family um, uh, the Torps, yeah, Torps, uh, Isabel Torp and her brother, but she first meets Isabel and they become best friends, they inseparable, they go to balls together and they just do everything together. But uh, also one of the nights of like these dances and uh, common rooms that they go to, she, she meets this young man called Henry and like actually from the first moment that she sees him and talks to him, she kind of falls in love. And it's like this coming of age story about a girl that discovering uh, love for the first time and friendship with uh, people from her own age and just doing the things that people of her class did during that time period. And it was quite funny to read because I actually realized that I didn't know much about how people spend their days during different like time periods. And the way that people spend their days in this time period and we were talking about not the working class but people above the working class. So they weren't super rich but didn't have to work. She just the only thing that she did was the whole day go into this like um, rooms where she met older people and just the only thing that they did was dance, talk, um, drink some tea and just gossip. That That's it. That was their life. For me it felt a little bit meaningless. Let's just 
gossip, making other people dance, and that, that was the whole day. But then she, uh, Henry comes back and she also uh, meets his sister and they become friends. And eventually they invite her to their home and, and they live in an abbey and she's like very interested in gothic novels so she's very excited to check out this abbey. So there are a lot of dilemmas discussed here of friendship, what makes you a good friend and what, what isn't a good friendship or loyalty. But also her love for gothic novels kind of clouds her mind and kind of limits her to think like everything is in a gothic novel just because she's in an abbey so something should be going on there should be a ghost or there should be like a murder and um yeah that was quite interesting to read so it's it's just it's not uh it's a difficult story and i think it's a perfect book to start out with jane austen at the end there's this essay like this book review by um susanna carson i didn't really like her review she's like really mean about the main character catherine she calls her dumb and naive and she doesn't really believe into in the romance of catherine and henry i i actually like the romance i um i think henry was a very nice gentleman and um yeah i i like the character of catherine in the beginning she was of course quite naive but she's a young girl that just starts to make friends adult friends and meets her first love for the first time like yeah of course she's a little bit naive but she's not stupid like um the review says she is so i didn't really like the review um but i liked the book i gave it i think also four stars it's not a gothic novel so if you want to read something more spooky or like gothic horror uh, this is not it. This is more a coming of age story with a small, like, small gothic twist. So, yeah, that's it. Then we will go into real horror, which is Junji Ito. Uh, this is a manga, Shiver, and it's a collection of uh, short stories. I read every year in October Junji Ito, and uh, I really like his works. And it's not the stories that make it scary or just, like, original horror it's more his art style it sometimes it's very eerie so there were two stories that i really liked in here one of them was about uh like this killing balloons and these balloons were made um were like floating faces of yourself so every person in the city uh had a balloon that looked exactly like him but like was like it's his own floating face and it tried to hang them. So it was, I, I thought that was an original concept and it also was like drawn in a scary way. But the story that really gets me, that I really wanted to finish quickly and just didn't want to look at much, um, was the story about the fashion model. It's the third story in here. I found it really eerie. I um, didn't want to look too long at the model because she was just, just scary to look at so and it does it the thing with Junji Ito he's really good at making these characters that are just horrible to look at <laughs> there's something with their eyes there's something with their faces um he's just really good at that and yeah this collection I think I like this more than his other book that I read last year which was Gyo I think my favorite for so far are Uzumaki and this one and then Gyo and I still have to read his other work. But um, yeah, this one, definitely a recommendation if you want something spooky and something quick to read. You can easily read it in a day or two. Then I read The Halloween Tree and actually I finished this one on the 2nd of November. So not actually in October, but uh, I still going to count it as an October read because yeah, it's, it's about Halloween. This one also surprised me so it's by Ray Bradbury and it's supposed to be a children's story and it, of course it is a children's story but the ending is quite philosophical I didn't expect that so we start out with these nine friends that go in to trick or treat or like to celebrate Halloween and they realize that they're missing someone uh, they're just eight and they're supposed to be nine friends so they they're missing like their most valuable friends it, it the whole story they're talking about how great this friend is so like it, it feels like it's most a uh, viable member of the group uh but it's pipkin which is of course i think derived from pumpkin but i, I really like the name it's quite cute uh yeah they realize that he's not around and they go to his house and ask uh, if he's also going along and he says well you go alone and i will come with you but he doesn't look so great so he looks a little bit sick 
uh, so they are worried but yeah he says that she, they should just go trick-or-treating and he will come so they go to the house uh, that it's like this creepy house somewhere and uh, they, there's this Halloween tree with all pumpkins in there with lights it's like a very spooky atmosphere very nice and then um, there's this guy takes them watch all kinds of different celebrations of Halloween in the world uh, but in different time periods so then of course uh, the magic <laughs> comes into the story it gets a little bit darker and darker with every time period that they go through and in the end there is this philosophical question that they kind of have to answer and I didn't expect that I also felt this way with his other book which is uh, something wicked this way comes it's interesting for children but it's also interesting for adults and I think it, that makes his work special and he has actually written a lot of books that are just perfect for the month of October so we have this one the Halloween tree I mean which other one should you read this book if it's not October um also something wicked this way comes it's it also takes place in October then there is a short story collection the October country which I have behind me and I think I'm going to read that one next year uh, in October but yeah his work focuses a lot on autumn and the celebration of that <laughs> so yeah I, I really like it I gave this one also four stars this were all the books that I actually finished then I also started reading Dorian Gray which is of course on my TBR forever and I hopefully I will read it in November uh, I think I tried I will try to finish it next week I'm also reading it on my e-reader because it's just easier sometimes so I am a little bit farther than um, it looks like I really enjoyed it so far it's it's a great story and I think Oscar Wilde is really good at making characters interesting the different friendships or like connections between the characters are interesting um yeah i can discuss it more when i finish reading it i also started reading wire right by uh, george orwell and this is just like an essay and it's from penguin great ideas edition and i was interested in this one because i wanted to know more about george orwell's writing and his views on writing and being an author and this book started out this way uh it's well written uh, but then it kind of shifts into politics of England in like the 1930s and just before the Second World War. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I noticed that I don't know much about politics in general, but definitely not much about politics in England. It's still interesting, but for now it's a little bit too much politics for me. I hope he will change the subject into writing again. But um, yeah, so far I really do enjoy this essay and uh, i also started reading the story before dracula which is carmilla this is a vampire story that uh, is written before dracula and it's about a female vampire and just started it yesterday and after this one i will start reading dracula so this is like my november tbr for now uh finishing this book also uh, the picture of dorian gray and then dracula and then um finish all the books that i'm still reading from like September and older months and then I also in October read uh, The Fall of the House of Usher and other writings and this is a collection of Edgar Allan Poe's uh, poems Edgar Allan Poe's poems and essays and short stories so I bought this uh, book because I wanted to read The Fall of the House of Usher uh, before I watched the Netflix adaptation so I watched the Netflix adaptation I loved it one of the best Mike Flanagan's shows ever. First The House of Hill House and then The Fall of the House of Usher. <laughs> so yeah, great uh, adaptation. Uh, totally different than the story as always with Mike Flanagan's adaptations. There, it's more inspiration than adaptation, but it's really good. The story itself, also really good, but quite difficult to read. I didn't realize this, but uh, most of like Edgar Allan Poe's work is difficult to read. So for now, I read it the first time I try to read more about the story and about Poe's life and then I reread the story. So I still have to reread The Fall of the House of Usher, but I did reread the Tell Tell Heart uh, during this month and uh, I really liked that one. And I also reread The Cask of Amontillado. All of the stories, great to read, try it out. Um, I also really liked 
one of his poems, which is the city at sea, the city in the sea, the city in the sea. Yeah, beautiful poem. And I started to read more about like Poe's life, which is uh, written in introduction. I really like this edition. It's uh, I think it's a good start in Poe's work. But yeah, that was everything for the month of October. So have a nice evening, have a great November month, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.